minutes, you're going to hear the Kaya Mountain, the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. 15 minutes gone past the hour in the morning time. Let me first apologize for the delayed start of this morning's broadcast. Murphy's Law being what it is, if anything would go wrong, it goes wrong at the worst possible time. But all things being equal, we have those technical issues. They've been resolved. And let me say good morning to you, our listeners that's joining us on Classic 105.5 and 105.9. And good morning to our listeners that's just joining us via television, GBN Channel 7, Channel 11, Channel 20. If you're in cable, or if you're following us via the World Wide Web at www.gbn.gd via our Facebook and YouTube um, platforms, you say thanks for being part of the broadcast and welcome to this edition of to, to the Point for today, the ninth day of the month of March. Time has already been spent. We're going to jump straight into the conversation. Allow me to introduce my guest this morning. He's no stranger to the GBN. He is the chairman of the National Organizing Committee as we task with the responsibility of preparedness, getting the stadium prepared for the third of the test match, the English visit to of the Caribbean, uh, Mr. Troy Garvey. Uh, good morning to you, Troy. How are you? Good morning to you and your listeners across your various platforms. And it's indeed a pleasure to be here with you this um, this morning as we continue our countdown to the third test match, West Indies versus England at the National Stadium in St. George's, Grenada. Thank you for being for being on the program. We doubt in the eyes crossing the T's. Um, give us a sense. Where are we as it relates to preparation for the third test? Um, well, um, I'm sure most uh, sporting fans and listeners and uh, enthusiasts across the Caribbean will know that the Test Series started yesterday in Antigua at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. And um, it was a great day of cricket yesterday, full day. And uh, the teams are competing. It's one of the oldest rivalries in international cricket, England versus the West Indies. And uh, this series being competed for the Richards Botham Trophy and a three test match series, one in Antigua, one in Barbados, and the final one here in St. George's, Grenada. Where we are right now, we are well set. We are ready to go. It's a matter of, um, as you say, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and uh, we have been able to bring together all the various stakeholders to ensure that uh, this is a great experience. Most importantly, not just cricket, but the activities of the field of play, because we are seeing this most importantly as uh, a message from Grenada, mainly using the tourism platform to let the region to let the world know that Grenada, we are back, we can handle events of this nature, and most importantly, the country is ready to accept visitors from around the world after two years of a uh, pandemic that really held the entire world, a global effect, a negative um, impact on the entire world. So we are ready. We can, um, and we'll be well prepared for the deliveries on the 24th of March. And I'm happy, of course, that for, for all of the sport and the sport and enthusiasts, we'll be quite happy. Um, let me just continue and where the path that you want before we get into some of the specifics in terms of ticketing and, and all of that. Um, you did highlight the fact that COVID has impact on the last on the sporting arena for the last two years, our economies for the last two years, and certainly it is a welcome addition. Uh, test cricket at the National Stadium. I mean, certainly it it goes a long way to highlight uh, Grenada as a destination for greater and bigger international events. A test match, five days, we've traditionally had the smaller versions, the shorter versions of the game. Well, we have, we have enjoyed one day in, um, the, the ODIs, the T20 games. But I think what is so important, and um, this is so crucial for Grenada, at this time in, um, on the international platform, because to us, it's much more than cricket. It's way beyond the field of play. And that's why I think the government has invested so heavily, left no stone unturned to ensure that one, we maximize the visibility of the country. We showcase the country. We encourage persons to come to Grenada. It was quite fitting that this is the English store because of um, our, tourism relation and activities with Europe 
mainly through the UK market, it's so important for us. So this platform is being used to send that message. And the Grenada Tourism Authority has done a fantastic job. They have been on the ball, they have been aggressive, they have been proactive in terms of doing what they're supposed to, not only locally, but across the pond to ensure that all the stakeholders, the two operators, all the persons, persons who will have an interest to come to Grenada, will come to Grenada. And of course, the visibility of having five days of international television coverage, I think is something that goes way beyond, especially at this stage in the country's um, efforts to move forward, to move away, to move beyond the whole situation that we have been faced, especially for the hospitality sector. We all knew what happened to the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, that entire sector from the taxi drivers and the vendors and the tour operators here, they were at a standstill for a very long time. And we believe this is a conduit. This is an opportunity for them to realign themselves, get themselves back together to really showcase country, and most importantly, as we say locally, eat a food. <laughs> and I know most people would agree with you on that one, but in order to eat a food, there are certain elements that has to be put, that is, I mean, put together, the cultural debate, the entertainment, and I know when we, we a couple, Two weeks ago, previously, when you, you did, did a launch, you did that press conference, we did, you had Ricardo Keynes Douglas, who highlighted um, a different, the cultural facet that has been added to this cricketing engagement. Share with us so persons can get an appreciation that is just well, really more than cricket. As we said um, from the offset, it's much more than just bat and ball. The bat and ball is going to happen. That happens from 10 o'clock in the morning, from the 24th until the last ball, until there's a winner or there's a, a drawn game. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the men in maroon will do what, they're, what we're expecting them to do and deliver a victory for us. But um, to us as a country, it's much more beyond just the field of play. The activities on the field of play will take place. The Cricket Association under... Dwayne Gill and his team, they have done a fantastic job. They have been doing so for many, many years. And all the, all the responses and all the deliverables there will be met. We are very positive and quite sure about that. As just a sidetrack a bit, the pitch and field, excellent condition. And lots of work continues on the inside of the stadium to ensure that the event you know, is delivered. What happens off the field of play? What happens before and after the game? And uh, from arrival at the Points Lean International Airport, we have done the necessary signage and branding and advertising from the Points Lean International Airport to as far as it is in St. Patrick's. You drive around the country, you see billboards, you see flyers, you see activities on the local media, on the traditional media platforms, on the social media platforms. Things are happening to encourage persons. We are expecting visitors to our country, be it one, two, five thousand, six thousand, how many, you know, it's important that we create the right visitor experience to spread that message. That one is great here in Grenada. It's a worthwhile trip to uh, Grenada. And uh, everything is in place from arrival at the airport to the hotels, to the guest houses, to the Airbnb. All these areas are being looked at, being delivered on. And there will be some cultural activities that's being planned. And uh, all that will complement to showcase more of country. It's quite timing, timely that this activity is happening now, right on the announcement of plans for Spice Mass 2022. So you'll see lots of things targeting visitors, especially persons who cannot make it to Grenada now, but they will see things and will probably entice them, encourage them to come to be a part of Spice Mass in August. So it's a well put together approach Mm -hmm. That's why we always say it's beyond the field of play. It's, you know, it's about Grenada. It's about showcasing country. It's about showcasing our people and looking forward to those five days of cricket to do just that. As we stay, there's going to be the local fans that's going to be here. We know there's the diehard cricket fans, those here at home and those that's coming. But those that's out there in the diaspora, and as you hinted to the fact that the launch of Spice Mass, um, paint a picture for me um, as it relates to the cultural package. Uh, 
um, as to what can repeat persons really anticipate in terms of the different elements, cultural, cultural elements? And if so, um, where are we specifically in that persons, whether they want to be part of it? Um, just paint a picture for us. Well, I think um, the cultural activities at the stadium are just to be um, showcase things Grenada. There will be um, products and so made in the country. There will be some of the cultural elements being showcased and delivered during certain intervals of the day display. There will be activities on the outside of the stadium and what we consider to be a fan zone. Again, given someone can come to the stadium a bit earlier and enjoy a taste of a Grenadian breakfast, some swordfish and some cocoa tea and some, you know, those are things that you would not have seen before that we're hoping to have for those five days. And I said that the Board of Tourism, the Tourism Authority, sorry, and the Spice Mask Co Co Corporation, they are, they are the ones responsible and putting those things together. What I can safely tell you, I'm not going to itemize and tell you and see X, Y, Z. What I'll tell you is to come. Come and be a part of the experience that is going to be uniquely Grenadian. We're trying to ensure that this activity is something that is uniquely Grenadian, not seen elsewhere in the Caribbean. And we have put a lot of effort and work into it to ensure that that objective is delivered. 27 minutes gone past the hour in the morning time. My guest this morning is Mr. Troy Garvey, and he's the chairman of the National Organizing Committee as we get ready. Grenada gets ready uh, to play host to the third test in this English tour of the Caribbean. Uh, the, the test, third test, right here at the National Stadium. We take a quick commercial break, though, and we'll be right back, right here on To The Point. a one-hour performance gig every Thursday from 8 p.m. featuring performances from our local musicians and short interviews discussing all things musical. Every Thursday, a different musician and a different instrument will be featured, from the violin to the saxophone to the trumpet, guitar, and steel pan. Our local musicians playing, improvising, and educating us on genres of music. Join GBN with both musicians Matthias and Shireen and a special guest every Thursday at 8pm. It's proving smooth and live on GBN. Join GBN on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. for Interesting Grenadians, a program that showcases the lives of interesting and outstanding Grenadians at home and abroad. It's Interesting Grenadians every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on GBN. Don't you miss it. Thank you. Welcome back to the program, to the point for today, the ninth day of the month of March. And my guest this morning, Mr. Troy Garvey, he's the chairman of the National Organizing Committee as we get ready. Uh, we're going to get ready to host the third test in the English tour of the Caribbean. We said, Troy, dotting the eyes, crossing the T's, we were literally ready to go. Um, this, this, is, this test is, there's a lot of euphoria, a lot of excitement in the air. No argument over that. And we've talked about that complete package that's been offered. And let's talk about its security protocol, because uh, this would be a critical element to what happens, what transpires in and about and around the stadium. So talk to us, if you can, about protocols in light of that this is happening within um, a COVID uh, during the pandemic. Okay, well, um, in terms of security operations, the RGPF would, leave, would lead it the security approach and they have um, they've been on the ground they've been looking not just at the national stadium and the environs they're looking countrywide because if we are and we are expecting a number of visitors and we want to ensure that they have an experience of a safe Grenada we both have been in one of the safest destinations in the Caribbean and we want to ensure that that is maintained and uh, so the RGPF leaving again no stone unturned, ensuring that from arrival to departure that all the elements are in place. As it relates to the, um, 
the National Stadium. You're trying to keep the any disruptions and changes at a minimum. That is, that's important. So let persons know that uh, the um, the entry protocol, basically for um, persons entering the, um, to see the game, you must be you must be fully vaccinated. That is that is across the board. That's across all the three destinations, the three venues for the event. It will be the same here, and um, you will have to with on purchase. Once you purchase a ticket to enter the facility, you will have to um, present your your um, vaccination certificate to ensure a point of entry. And uh, the Ministry of Health will deliver on those. So basically, that is what it is, to let persons know that at this point in time, you can purchase tickets online from windyscricket.com, or you can wait until the opening of the local box office, which will be on the 17th of this month at the National Stadium in St. George's. I can let persons know that as we speak right now, you will see lots of um, construction work being done on the river roadside, and it has impacted somewhat on the stadium right now. We are in touch. We have met with the contractors, and that's all part of the river uh, mitigation project that will take that starts from the Green Bridge, go right back up to up to, I think, Tempe, the roundabout there. I'm um, subject to correction there. But as we speak right now, the stadium is right part of that site. We have met with the contractors and we have worked out a, a plan that we see is quite workable for match days and the few days before match days that will cause no interference whatsoever with the activities at the stadium. So we're quite comfortable and we're quite, you know, where we are with that. One will see even the access fences and so have been, been, you know, been removed and ensuring proper access at the persons. And uh, these are things that we have totally under control. Um, the RGPF have, will meet with the persons who utilize the ring road right around the stadium. We'll ask them to the usual levels of cooperation, remove the, all, all the vehicles parked there. These are things that is being things are being worked on as we speak right now. So basically, there's nothing significantly different to persons who have tried to access the facility before. You know, but so just ensure that you must be fully vaccinated. There will be vaccination checks being done at every ingress point and persons, you know, must be fully aware and understanding of that and we beg your cooperation. You didn't mean that the box office opens on the on the on the on the seventeenth, and persons can make purchase of tickets online. Uh, are there any um, special um, in terms of packages packages that's available for locals, nationals, and anyone interested in getting? There are there are the special there are the special. As we speak right now, you can even enjoy it right now. And when I say for. Caribbean National, because it's consistent in the three locations, meets Antigua, Barbados, and in, in Grenada. You can get uh, nationals with proof can get the 50% off the cost of the tickets right now. You can go online and you will receive that level of discount. Senior citizens and children, it's it would be as much as close as 75% off on tickets right now. Mm -hmm. So, and it would be also, you can get the same at the box office. But we like to encourage persons because that is going to be the norm in moving forward in terms of going online to purchase uh, your tickets. Uh, and uh, we we'll encourage persons to go to windyscricket.com to make your purchases and uh, enjoy the discounts. You get the discounts online, you get it at the box office. But right now, if you want to have a particular seat, if you want to have a particular seat, if, if you want to sit in a particular area, mm -hmm. I would advise that you go now to purchase uh, your ticket at windyscricket.com. I know, Troy, you highlighted the fact, and we can well appreciate that security details is being covered by the IGPF, and certainly their strategies, they wouldn't want to um, disclose that. Uh, but as part of the general atmosphere that is anticipated for the stadium, there are some general do's and don'ts. And we're not going to assume that everybody knows in terms of um, individuals as to what can, what will be permitted, what should be permitted. Can you speak to that for us so that the general public gets an appreciation? Okay. 
definition of that. Okay, by and large, everybody purchasing a ticket, you will you will preview the, the terms and conditions. You're not just going to just purchase a ticket and you get a ticket. But there are certain things that you can do. There are certain things that you encourage not to do. Do not expect to bring a cooler that is six feet by four feet. And, you know, these are things that would not be allowed, as much as we encourage persons to bring down this stuff. You know it's a standard with these events and uh, most events, the use of glass bottles and there are certain prohibited items. And once you go online, one, it will be clearly displayed at the box office for persons wanting to purchase a ticket directly. Online, you will be advised and you will see all the items, what you can and what you cannot do. There's a list of things, but I think persons need to understand that. Um, and we have been going through this really and truly since 2007 with hosting of the Cricket World Cup. And, uh, you know, people, we are custom, bring every big pot, and bring, there are certain restrictions, and we beg persons to understand. And uh, you do not want to bring a cooler that will impact on someone sitting next to you. You know, these, these are things. So we ask persons to be understanding. We ask persons to cooperate. We ask persons to seek information in advance. If in doubt, seek, find out. Right. Do not show up and then having an issue and the security detail of the ushers are telling you that you cannot bring in this or you cannot bring in that you know these are do not come with glass bottles do not come with oversized you know coolers and there are specifications there are standards and we are asking persons to be understanding and to cooperate we have a caller as we reopen the lines uh, good morning caller you alive um, good morning a, a question a short question and an observation uh senior citizen is from what age I know it's from the 60. 60? It was 60 years. Right. Another thing, please, sir, if I could have get you um, off the air, I would not have said it here because this is not to embarrass you. You could look it up for me, please. There is nothing. You do not use persons like that. There is no plural. Technically, there is no plural to person. That is crowd, gathering, people, etc. Just an observation. You can look it up. They are limited by when you lose person, five people or less. So just look it up for posterity purposes. Sorry for that. Good morning. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, caller. All the best to you. 22 minutes on to the hour in the morning time. The number to get in on the inside, 435-2041. Or you can post your comments, as you normally do, on the WhatsApp page. Same as the in-studio number, 435-2041, as you can see on screen. And continue to post your comments via the WhatsApp portal. So let's get back to this do's and don'ts inside the studio. I know we said we've been talking about this since 2007. Um, the... Use of electronic gadgets, recording, um, in terms of how it's used, what's permitted, what's not allowed. If you can share, I don't think we can ever overemphasize the need to get that information out there. Well, you would not be allowed to. You would not be. If someone comes in with a camera, and you might be, you will be able to take personal shots or so. But in terms of if someone, if the security, and they're they're very keen on this, and it's not just for us here in Grenada, but one has to understand that um, I can let you know that the security, they're quite keen and they're trained to, to, certain, to look for certain things, specific things, and they will do so. This is an international event and the international implications and that go way beyond just us here in St. George's. And um, we are urging persons to be on the straight and narrow in terms of recording devices, in terms of the usage of cell phones. There are a number of things that, you know, the security forces will be looking at and um, just like to urge persons to not be tempted in terms of trying to do something that will find you in any, vi in any, in any violation whatsoever. Yeah, I think it's important and uh, we underscore that, that this is not um, the National Organizing Committee or anybody within the cricket fraternity locally that's trying to res put restrictions to, to individuals. You have to comply and subscribe to international rules and restrictions in Grenada. It will be no different. It's across, it's across any territory, wherever you are. 
here at home, region, internationally. These are international standards, and certainly they must be complied to. Flags, Troy? Are we not, um, you know, we, we are not trying to scare people away. Oh, no, right. We yes. like persons to come here and to have a good time. Come and have a good time. And we're trying to make this as Grenadian, as Caribbean as it's possible. We want to see people having a good time, smiles on faces, boundaries being struck, you know, and we want persons to enjoy cricket the way we have done in the 80s and 90s and come and have a good test match and have, you know, have a good, a good feel. And to our visitors, you know, enjoy the country, enjoy the cricket, enjoy the spice to all, to, to all the locals. Come and have a good time. You know, all the a... cricket fans, you know, come have a good time and let us try to use this platform to just, you know, five days, let's hope we get five full days, five full days of exciting cricket. Let's just come and have a good time at, um, at the National Stadium. You have a call of your life. Your question or comments, please. Hello, good morning. Yes, go ahead, please. Do you have to purchase your vaccination card at the ticket booth or at the gate? Let me make sure. Do you have to purchase what, sir? Your vaccination card, the um, proof of vaccination. You have to show your proof of, of, um, of vaccination when you're about to enter the stadium. To enter the stadium? Yeah. Okay, okay. So not necessarily, not necessarily at the gate or the ticket booth. When you enter, at the, before you get into the seating bowl, there will be teams from the Ministry of Health with the necessary data to check your vaccination status. Okay, okay, okay. It was similar like we did for patrons in the South Africa One Day Internationals. Mm -hmm. It's quite similar. Okay, right. And I think by now, as I said, person, as you said, we can adapt. This is part of the new environment. As you talked about enjoying and the, trying to get people to get into the mood of cricket as it is, Grenadian, Caribbean thing, we, the flags, we talked about the coolers, uh, but what about the flags and all of those different things? Are there restrictions, if so? You will see flags, especially with the um, British fans, you'll see them with their fags and their banners and, uh, you know, it's part of the game. You know, it is part of the game and it's something that, you know, we would not stop persons from having, once the flags are not obstructing the view of, of uh, you know, of persons, uh, you know, you will see persons having a good time and, and um, we're trying to encourage that. It's, as, as we say, come enjoy the spice, you know. It's all part of, you know, Caribbean cricket. Come on. All part of Caribbean cricket, the fun, the color, the food, everything um, that we've come to expect over over the years. Um, tickets, you said, Troy. The ticket boots it opens from the from the from the from the seventh from the seventh, and you did intimate that there are deals. Seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yes, yeah, sorry, that there are deals that's on. Um, for locals, and I'm assuming there's also seasonal. There will be seasonal tickets as well for persons who are probably interested in being there for all for all for all five days. You will, as I indicated, you will get discounts. There are discounted tickets. There are the tickets you can right now. A Grenadian wanting to purchase a ticket for any one of the days can do so, and you will receive 50% off that purchase, that seat, that particular seat. Senior citizens, well, I think it's as much as 75% off online right now. And it will continue for once the box office is open. Good morning, caller. You're live. Your question comments, please. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, my question is, what does Grenada have to gain, or what profit does Grenada get from that hosting that international game? We have a problem with the World Cup. We up to now, we are part of the World Cup at a loss. South Africa come here at a loss. Now we have England come here and you hyping it up about no vaccine must be involved. I want to know what profit we will be getting, what the country will be getting from that. Thank but, you. But before you go, caller, before Mr. Garvey responds to what the, the Grenada is getting, and it's unfortunate the caller hung up because I would really want to know um, what qualifies him to make the determination that any other previous engagements op operated at a loss. But that being said, and okay, I mean, I mean, folks, I really really, really encourage you that you would, we avoid as much as possible to just making this blank erroneous statement. If you're willing to make a comment, then stay online that you can support and have a conversation. But Troy, that being said, if we could take the next half of the question, what's in it for us? 
Well, I think we started the conversation. Yes, we did. Yes. We started. We started the program, and we outlined quite clearly. And I think it's you know, really and truly, it's a very, it's a valid question. It's it is a valid question. Monies are being spent. I think it's an investment. And if you're going to look at just patronage at the stadium, obviously it would not make much sense to someone say, okay, only 10 persons came. But in terms, when you do, at this point in time, the hotels across the country are telling you that for that period, they are all booked out. They're at 95%, 90%, which has not been the norm. The restaurants in the area, the tour operators have been engaged. The taxi drivers have been engaged. So like I said, it's much more than just on the field of play or the activities within the walls of the stadium. We have to look at country. Someone coming into, let's say five persons come, they have to come through the airport, there are certain things that must happen, they will take a taxi, they'll go to a restaurant. It's a rippling effect as a result of this game being played here in Grenada. So it's not just a matter of persons going to the stadium or the patronage at the stadium. We have to look beyond that. You cannot pay for the exposure to the cricketing fraternity, to the United Kingdom, of five days of scenery, of seeing St. George's, having an option of seeing Grenada on your television. Understand the maths and the, and the rational behind doing certain things. That is why it was so important to, that the tourism authority took the lead, doing what they're doing. What they, this is about Grenada and not just you know patronage at the stadium or the result at the end of the at the end of the game. It's about showcasing this country. It's about providing opportunities for the hospitality sector. It's for ensuring that at, we show the world that look, we are ready, we are back. Be just as beautiful as before. It's about time that you come. It is about time you come. Uh, Colin, you, you alive? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, you like. Go ahead, please. Yeah, well, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. Um, hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, I'm hearing you, sir. I'm just asking you to move to away turn. to turn on the device. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, the previous caller. Yes, go ahead. I think we should realize that we're trying to market Grenada. This is not what we, you're missing. We're marketing Grenada. We don't need marketing. We just come out in the pandemic season. Oh, God, please. We need to listen to me. We have to market Grenada in order for we to get something. We don't have nothing. We're looking for something. We try to eat our food. Right? Thank you very much. I think, Troy, that should probably be the tagline for cricket. Uh, we take it positively. Let's ma no, maximize um, the beautiful. You, see, we talk, you know, but that's what we're saying. We're using this event to showcase country. How about, you know, how would you, you know, you cannot pay as a country for having five, six hours of live images coming out of your country, showing all your attractions, all your people, your, your culture, your thing. You, there's no way in the world that you know we can afford that kind of and that is what the cricket brings so this is one of the best opportunities that we will have in recent times to market and showcase the country that is why it's that's why we keep saying it's beyond the field of play it's about grenada and showcasing the country uh, good morning colin you're alive hello morning morning how are you guys doing? Oh, wonderful thank you i frankly think eh, that the process of marketing Grenada. In this time, given all the known facts about what is limiting the marketing process, that is the COVID. That is whole restriction of you have to be fully vaccinated it should be out of the door. I thought by now people have come to reality that that limits people to the extent that it ostracizes one from the other even though we have the freedom to move as we want in the country right now. So I don't understand why in that kind of particular situation you are letting it be, um, be a case of ostracism, ostracizing. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't find it makes sense you, you, you are doing a proper marketing in the process. 
I find you don't need a vaccination card to go to see cricket. People are mingling and doing everything that is normal in the country. All the other events are, 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 limit, are, are, are unlimited in that sense. How comes COVID become an issue when it comes to going and see cricket all of a sudden again? I thought my now that should have been out of the window. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Garvey, your comments? Well, I, I don't think we need to comment then because um, what the caller is saying, I understand his concern, but I don't think that he is correct in terms of um, what is being done in terms of we have made it quite clear it's consistent across the region and in international events football and different sporting you have to you know it's not just open to persons just generally that's not correct in terms of these events you have to be fully vaccinated we if we um persons who are fortunate or follow the um olympics in the winter games in China. china and these things you know, you understood what happened in terms of creating a bubble, in terms of who who is allowed that entry in. These are things. It's a norm. It's something that is um, we have to deal with. We have to respond to, and um, it's it, it is what it is. Just to use another terminology, but I think um, as where we stand right now is for vaccinated persons. And uh, that is quite consistent, not only in Grenada, but across the board and uh, throughout the international circuit. Keeping a match on the clock, eight minutes on to the hour. Troy, and you would have to agree that this test match, it's a template. And the eyes are on us as to how we perform our lack of our ability to adhere to international rules and regulations that will determine whether whether it's a year from now, two years from now, whether we do get another test within our lifetime. But um, it's ironic that you made that point. When we did the One Day Internationals, um, when South Africa came, mm -hmm. it was the intention of CWI and uh, ICC that the games would be held in an empty facility. Grenada took the lead to the Ministry of Sports and the government and say, look, we're at a position right now and these are things that we would like to do. And we right. served as a template in terms of ruling out the necessary protocols to ensure patronage. And thereafter, the other islands in the Caribbean fell in line, followed our lead. And it's, you know, it's something that you have to give great thought to and understand what's happening. It varies from country to country based on your analysis and your situation as it relates to COVID. Here in Grenada, we are very fortunate. A number of persons have taken the vaccination and uh, there's a level of comfort and you see the entry requirements into the country have changed. You're seeing certain protocols being changed and adjusted daily. And we had to keep it down to the wire to ensure, because this can change on the flip of a dime. And we have to be very understanding of that. But uh, it's not a situation to say, oh, we should just do this or we should just do that. We have to be very careful, understanding that we have a responsibility as a people. We have a responsibility to do what is right and not pretend that there isn't that threat or that effects of that pandemic thing still looming around us, you know, and we have we have to be understanding. We have another caller that's online. Good morning, caller. You're alive. Your question, comments, please. Good morning. I'm not sure if it was already said, but I wasn't um, the cost of a, a ticket for the five days. I you have a five days package. So what's the question you're asking, sir? I didn't know you could clearly. The cost of a season ticket. Someone needs to get a season ticket. Okay. Mr. Uh, Garvey, if you can just re re reiterate, uh, I think we did discuss it um, quite early in terms of where that information can be provided, can be I can, up um, to. First, as we speak right now, as we speak right now, you can go to windyscricket.com and uh, purchase a ticket. And um, it's done online. The box office will be opened here in St. George's at the National Stadium on the 17th of March. Um, there are tickets available at, you can put
which is a seat right now, because there are numbered seats in terms of where you would prefer to sit. Some persons might prefer to sit at the Junior Murray Roy Lewis stand. Some persons might, you know, might prefer to sit at the members' uh, pavilion. Some persons might prefer to go to the posse stand area. You have a choice. And there, once you insert your identification, your nationality, once you're Grenadian, you will receive a 50% discount on your purchases. So if it's uh, five days, if you're purchasing the, uh, the tickets for five days, you will get 50% off. If you're a senior citizen, you will get as much as 75% off. Two minutes on to the hour, it is to the point, we're getting ready just to run up. Troy, the anticipation is in the air, the euphoria, we know it's going to be electric. I know most folks were hoping that by the time we get here, I'm probably, I'm personally hoping by when we get here, we at least tied one, one apiece. Some say they want it to be two up. <laughs> I, I want Grenada to be the tiebreaker uh, so that we can really, really, really create well, some we excitement. Had, <laughs> we had the opportunity with the, with the two other South Africans here. Yes. <laughs> and we ended up on the other side of the coin. But I think we're looking forward to great cricket. I think it's an opportunity to showcase the, um, you know, team of Cindy's and uh, come out and, and, you know, and support. As I said before, it's for the um, Richards, Botham, Trophy, two of the legends in the, the rivalry, mm-hmm. Sir Vivian Richards and Sir Ian Botham. And um, I think the guys are on the field and they will give up their best and uh, let's look for a good result. Um, what can I say? Like I've been saying over and over. So to me, it's beyond the field of play. Let us look and do what we can to ensure that we have a great showing country wise. Let us ensure, as we see, let us use this event and this opportunity to showcase Grenada. The beauty of its, you know, culture, its people, its, you know, everything gr- are Grenadian. Let us showcase it in the best way possible to leave a lasting impression to show that this beautiful little place is back in business. We're ready to go and uh, we can move forward as a people. And especially for the persons within the hospitality sector that will directly engage the visitors and so that that we expect, I think it's a, a good opportunity for them to at least, you know, see some light at the end of the tunnel after going through two very, very hard years. You know, we, we have seen the closure of properties. We have seen, you know, the, you know, there are lots of things that that sector, when you speak to the taxi drivers, the tour operators, you know, these are persons who went through a very difficult time. And I think this can serve as a platform to show that we are back. Indeed, 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 we are back. Test cricket from the 24th of August, uh, 25th of March. Sorry, what's wrong with me, Troy? I can't, I can't wait for carnival, I guess. It's happening here, Grenada. Get out. As, as Mr. Gavi says, it's all about showcasing who we are. We get an opportunity to display ourselves to the world. The eyes of the world would be upon us. Now we get an opportunity to let them know that we're back. We've rebounded from COVID-19. Thanks to all our listeners, those of you on social media. Good morning to, again to you, Yuli and Alexander St. UB, Captain Francis, the regular contributors on our social media platforms. Thanks to my guest this morning, and uh, Mr. Troy Garvey, and he's the chairman of the National Organizing Committee. Wishing you, Mr. Garvey, all the best and the success, general success of the Organizing Committee as we do this, as we said, to let them know that we are back. Thank you. All the best. This is as far as I can take you uh, on to the point for today. Tomorrow, uh, we expected to have the members of the Royal Grenada Police Force in studio with us for another segment of To The Point. Until then, we continue to live life and love life. Each day is your last. And just keep what you have to keep doing what you have to do to be safe. Until then, have yourself a great one.